Hello everyone, it's been so long since my last review video. This time, Gaumann company reached out and sent me this M10K Pro tablet to try and review it. This tablet is a little different from the ones I tried before, since it can be connected to a computer as well as an Android phone. I've never used a tablet for drawing on my phone before, so I'm very looking forward to try that. Alright, without further talk, let's go ahead to see what's inside the box. Here's the tablet. It can be considered of a medium size as the dimensions are 360 by 240 mm. The thickness is 10.5 mm and its weight is around 700 grams only, so it's very light and slim. I like that it comes with a smooth surface. It's my favorite. Over here is a pouch. I'm not really sure what exactly it's for since it's smaller than the tablet size. But it can be safe to assume that it's meant to be used for storing the accompanying little accessories in one place, after discarding the package. Here is a bunch of items under this cover. First and most importantly, the pen. It's a battery-free pen, slim and very light, comes with two express keys. This is the cable that connects the tablet to the devices, whether PC or phone. I'm not sure what this is, but I guess the pen can be placed inside it? This little bag has the extra pen nibs and their clip. These are micro USB and USB-C adapters for connecting the tablet to Android phones. And this last plastic bag has an artist glow, which I personally never used before. A thank you message for purchasing the tablet with the customer support options. The link for downloading the tablet driver, written in several languages. And finally, user manuals for how to connect and set up the tablet. Now that unboxing is done, Let's proceed to test it. Of course, first things first, got to download and install the tablet driver. I headed to the link they provided, gamon.net slash download, it's pretty straightforward. The model is M10K Pro. I wanna download the driver, and it's for Windows. So I'll just download and install it, and then connect the tablet with the cable. Alright, done. I have two screens and I wanna set my tablet work area to only one of them. But when I came to the settings, I found everything grayed out. Turns out I had to enable administrator privileges by clicking here. Now the settings are active, and I can choose the screen with Clip Studio Paint, my drawing software. Over here we have the tablet and pen settings, including express keys and the likes. I don't usually use them, so I'm skipping setting them up. Alright, let's quickly test if the pen pressure is activated. Yay, it's working! I really like it when I don't need to restart my PC for the pen pressure to work, so I'm very delighted. Ok, now it's time to sketch a proper thing. As I'm sketching, I'll keep adjusting the pen pressure settings until I feel comfortable with them. Of course, they can be changed from the tablet settings, but I prefer to change them directly from Clip Studio Paint because I can test them immediately and adjust them accordingly. This tablet comes with 8192 pressure levels, just like any modern tablet these days, so it's pretty sensitive. It also comes with a 60 degrees pen tilt recognition, but to be honest with you, I've never tried pen tilt in my works before, so I don't know much about it yet. But I think it's pretty cool to have this function included in this tablet too. I definitely won't try it someday. I found it pretty easy to immediately get used to this tablet, it doesn't feel any different from my default one. I'm absolutely in love with the smoothness of the surface of this tablet. I'm saying this because not all tablets come with one. Many of them come with a textured surface. I used to think such a surface would be better because it resembles paper, but after trying a couple of textured tablets, I realized that smooth surfaces are my favorite. Because textured tablets produce friction and it constantly feels to me like I'm eroding the pen nib, so I kind of get anxious throughout drawing because of that. By the way, since I'll try the tablet on the phone later, I decided to only do the sketch and line art parts on the computer, and then transfer it to my phone to do the coloring there with the tablet. So I'll speed things up so we can proceed to the phone part. Ok, time for phone. I transferred the line art and opened it on Medibank Paint app, and I'm using my Samsung Galaxy Note 9 phone for this part. The work area for the phone is supposed to be the vertical part of the left side of the tablet only, but when I first connected it, the phone mode was not activated, and my cursor on the phone was responding with the whole work area of the tablet. So I had to do some online search and look at the manual before I finally figured it out. So basically, 
For the tablet to work on the phone, the USB OTG function or the USB on the go function has to be enabled. On my phone, I found that under a slightly different name. So what I did was, I went to settings, then developer options, then scrolled down to the USB debugging option and made sure it was enabled. By the way, you might not see the developer options on your phone because it's like advanced settings, but please do a quick search on the internet to see how you can enable it. It's a very simple process. So yeah, I did that, but it didn't quite solve the issue. The phone mode was not yet activated. Therefore, I tried the second solution, which is pressing the express keys number 1 and 5 on the tablet together and holding them for 3 seconds. And that solved it. My work area is now proper, so I went ahead with the coloring. One other issue I faced is that the pointer on the phone screen was not corresponding to the brush size, but I soon enough realized that I just had to modify the settings in Medibank Paint. I just had to enable this display brush cursor option. And now I can see the size of my brush through the cursor. To be honest, before trying this, I didn't think that it would be interesting for me to draw on the phone using a tablet. So I was thinking I'll just give it a quick try and then finish the coloring on the PC. But after trying it, I found it very enjoyable and I got so into it that I decided to go ahead and even try shading my artwork. But the biggest downside I face is that for my phone, the cable connection is at the bottom so I can't let it rest on my table in an angle while still having it face me and I don't have a proper stand to put it on. So I had to hold the phone in my hand the whole time and that was tiresome. After drawing for a while, I felt that my shoulder and neck started hurting, so I had to take a break. And it's also the reason why I didn't fully color my artwork. Leaving the phone horizontally on the table was not an option because I need to have the screen facing me to be able to coordinate my pen movement on the tablet. And I didn't really try drawing while having the phone in landscape mode because I'm not sure whether the tablet would support that. And to be honest with you, it was challenging enough for me to get the camera in this position so that I can film both the phone and the tablet at the same time while still being able to draw comfortably. So I skipped trying that. But the solution to that would be perhaps to try and get a phone stand for yourself or maybe use a plush toy or a tripod or a phone holder to support the phone in a suitable angle that's good for drawing. But other than that, I totally enjoyed my time drawing on the phone and I'm so happy I was able to reproduce my usual quality. I had tried drawing on phone before using the S Pen that comes with my Note 9 phone but it wasn't a very good experience because controlling my shaky hand was extremely hard when drawing directly on the phone screen. So I think that the idea of using a tablet for drawing on phone is splendid and would give a lot of opportunity to artists who don't have a computer or maybe have one but with poor specs or bad screen colors. The colors on phone screens and mobile tablets are generally vibrant and of high quality so that makes them a very attractive choice for drawing and having a tablet would definitely ease the process and allow for a more convenient drawing experience. By the way, out of curiosity, I wanted to try sketching on the phone to see how the lines would come out so I tried it both on Medibank Paint as well as Ibis Paint and in both trials, the lines came out nicely, not shaky whatsoever. So I think that when proper time and effort are invested into creating an artwork, you can create a lot of amazingly detailed artworks with this powerful tool. But I'll be honest with you, I don't think I would switch to drawing on phone. I'm just very used to drawing on PC with a screenless tablet. That has been my method for the past 11 years and I'm pretty happy and content with it and don't plan on changing that. So you'll most likely never see me drawing on phone unless it was a special occasion. But I have no doubt that new artists would find it very smooth if they directly start their drawing journey on phones. So to wrap up, I'll give you my overall thoughts on this tablet. In a nutshell, I love it. I personally think it's the best tablet I have reviewed so far. But to give more details in a pros and cons way, I would say, for pros, it's slim and light in weight, has a great pressure sensitivity, supports pen tilt, has a lovely smooth surface, and super easy to connect and set up as pen pressure was activated immediately and I didn't need to restart my PC. And lastly and most importantly, it only costs around $70, which is super affordable for all this package of amazing specs. I'm honestly amazed with how Gammon have improved their tablets. I only tried one of their tablets 3 years ago and it was satisfactory. So the leap in improvement is definitely huge in comparison to my last experience.
but going back to pros and cons. In terms of cons, the tablet doesn't come with a phone stand, so for phones whose USB connection is on the bottom like mine, it's not at all possible to have the phone stand on the table without getting external support. Also, the tablet pen doesn't come with a stand either, which is no big issue to be honest, but I guess I'm just used to have my pen in a stand on its own. It does come, however, with that little pocket thing where you can insert the pen in. Additionally, another con is that the tablet can only work with Android phones, so those with other operating systems would unfortunately not be able to use it. One last thing is not a con, but more like a little wish of mine. If this tablet came with the wireless feature, it would have been a super perfect tablet for me. But that's just me because I'm not a fan of cables, it doesn't affect the tablet's value at all. However, I truly hope tablet companies will start incorporating such feature in their future tablets. So, at last, if you're considering buying this tablet, I would say definitely go for it without hesitation. It's amazing and totally worth it, a great value for such a low cost. And that leads me to conclude this review video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed working on it. If you have any questions that you think I didn't answer in my video, feel free to leave your comments and I'll do my best to answer if it's within my capabilities. Thanks for watching.